Uh, I'm Rich Siegel, head of Quakersoft. Uh, my name is Paul. Uh, I am aka Chipocrite. I do all the music for uh, our game, which our is game. called Earth Knight, and uh, and all the other Cleversoft games someday. <laughs> yeah, hopefully. Um, Earth Knight is about the dragon apocalypse. Dragons have taken over the Earth, and the final remaining humans are in space as refugees. And one day, our heroes, Stanley and Sydney, decide they've had enough. They're going to skydive down to the planet and take out as many dragons as they can on their way. It's a, um, a runner game, simple controls, uh, anybody can play, it's only two buttons, but uh, and it's not endless, I know like people say that the genre is endless runner, but there's an end to our game, you will hit the planet, in fact the final world is called Earth Knight, the title of the game. Um, it's a game of finesse, and, and where you die a lot, and hopefully every time you die you learn something new. Um, we're leaning towards just like no hand holding pretty much. Uh, you're gonna need to kind of like talk to your friends and find out things on the internet you didn't know were possible. And um, we're building Twitch streaming right into it on PlayStation 4, which is super cool. We're super excited about that. And we hope that, you know, people stream their runs, people learn from each other and unlock all of the secrets that the game has to hold. I had uh, tried to get an indie game for years. I'd submitted builds and never got picked or, or anything and show and tell was open to the public. Um, I think they did curate a list. I think I was like waitlisted. Um, but then, you know, I, I got the email that I was going to get a slot, and we're from Philadelphia, so it was a quick, easy drive up, and we did it. Um, we like went home. We like didn't know if it went well. It was snowing, uh, and I think like four or five days later, I got an email from Sony, and they said, "Hey, we saw your game. We didn't get to talk to you, but we'd love to talk to you about making it a PlayStation game." And since then, we went to E3 and Indiecade and PlayStation Expo with Sony, and we've signed on to launch exclusively on PlayStation 4. It hasn't really changed development that much. Uh, we were targeting iOS for first launch, and now we're targeting PlayStation 4, so we can do more. We have like more processing power behind us, more texture memory. Um, but Sony hasn't... My, my one thing that I said to them was, you know, I, I can't have a date or a due date. I, I've been working on it for three years now, and I have no idea when I'm going to finish. Um, but I have to finish it right. I've come too far not to, you know, make it all it can be. Um, so Sony hasn't, like, done really anything creatively to, like, change development. I guess they've just been really supportive and helped us get the word out there. We've done a lot of events recently, and uh, I don't know, this one's the nicest. This, I, you guys really do a fantastic job. Um, but it, it does, doing too many events I think really does hurt development because I don't have the discipline, like the night in the woods guys, who I love, to just like put out the same build. Like I, um, I was gonna take Thursday off, we, we came up here Friday and like not work on it, I'd given Sony a build Wednesday night and I just worked all day Thursday and came with a new build on a hard drive because I'm crazy. So far just like, especially at events like this, just like I was just thinking, I was, we were probably sitting there for like two, three hours just now and I was like, I could do this all day, just like, Watching people learn the moment when somebody gets something and they're like they start out playing and they're like you know losing and it's terrible and then like even just 20 seconds later they're like nailing it. That's the best feeling. It's super exciting. Uh, it's it's great to be able to see that. And it's you know spending so much time at home that's not really that exciting. That's not that much fun. <laughs> but then when you get it out here at events like this and you see people using it, you're like. This makes sense. I get it. I understand. Like this is why, and and I'm glad. It's just so exciting to see other people getting it also because that's that's what you want. Um, my favorite part of development. Uh, so I mean, I agonize over every little detail, um, and sometimes the rest of the team like hates that. But that's important. Uh, but if we're talking about just like the general experience of developing it, because most of the fun stuff that I do is fun, but it's work. Um, Paul Davy. His internet tag is Mad Hand. He paints everything you see in the game, every frame of every character, and the main characters are over 200 frames each. Um, we're talking about a lot of hand painted art. Uh, you know, every couple weeks he uploads 15 new frames, 20 new frames, or a new dragon, and I see it for the first time. And for him, he loves it when he sees it in the game because he spends the work painting the frames. So it's like when he sees it in the game, but you know, he likes that. But for me, it's like, when those files just get uploaded on Dropbox still, every time my, my jaw drops and I'm just like, oh my god, Paul, they're so beautiful, <laughs> they're so amazing. Um, so just to, and it's with everybody, you know, um, when, when I get new 2D frames from Zach or when, when Shibakrit delivers a new song, just like 
being the guy who gets to enjoy all these assets kind of roll in, I get that first crack at them before they're even part of anything. It's just this, it's been three years and it still wows me every time. I'm a, I'm a really lucky guy to have such unbelievably talented people to work with. And it's, uh, it's like the pleasure of my life. I, I guess they're, they're my favorite games to play. Um, I'm, a, I'm a junkie. I'm playing five video games right now. When I get home, I'm gonna start Majora's Mask on that new 3DS so hard. I'm so excited about it. It's been since I was a little kid. Um, but I love Nintendo. I've been a Nintendo kid since I was five years old. Um, I, I have little to no interest in most of the big budget games these days. Um, Gears of War maybe was like the last one. I'm, I'm gonna play Dragon Age. Uh, I mean, everybody loves that. I'm definitely gonna try it. Try Destiny. Yeah, no. Nah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, and, and it. it's beautiful. Yeah. I, I, I try everything, mm -hmm. but um, if we're talking about my favorite games of the past couple of years. We're talking about Spelunky, and Fez, and uh, Meat Boy, and you know the and Isaac. You know Isaac. <laughs> uh, I these games are what I love to play the most, and. I, I don't know. I wanted to bring that experience to mobile, that like really high quality indie experience, and I, I think I'm going to do that by the time I'm done. Um, I wanted to, you know, make my statement of what a video game should be. This game, quite unlike every other project I've worked on before, is actually a sum of my taste, likes, and dislikes from every video game I've ever played. Um, I want to just add, I, I really like. And I feel like I see it more at events like this or when we, you know, um, go to events in Philly where there's, like, lots of local game developers who just hang out. Like, the more I see it, the, the more I see that there really is, like, this sense of camaraderie and just, like, everybody is in it together and they know it and they like it. And more than any other, like, business, because at the end of the day, it's a business, unfortunately, people are just, like, not competing. They're like friendly and they, everybody, people keep saying like one, one person does well, everybody kind of does well. And it's just the truth, you know? Uh, at events like this, there's like a huge sense of like, uh, indicate I've been going here for years, I love it, this is my thing. And it's like, it's a sense of being a part of something with other people. And that's a really, that's tough to get in like a business world thing. You know, everybody thinks that their product is the best and like, everything else sucks but it, like here you know people like take pride in each other's accomplishments it's really nice and uh and like from a music standpoint um there's a lot of competition in music it's really obnoxious like i have like a jazz background and like jazz is just the worst scene in the world people will just they're not shy about making you feel bad about being bad um that never happens here even if somebody thinks you're bad they will like give you something constructive to like help you because they maybe see potential, and like, that is, that's, that's unique, it's really unique and it's very exciting. I don't know if it'll last forever, but I mean, we all truly do think that like, every indie hit that happens that does really well financially, <coughs> that's not like taking money out of everybody's pockets who yeah. also makes indie games, that's actually yeah. working towards all of us doing better, yeah. and the medium just kind of becoming bigger and bigger. And I feel, I feel like so it's unique. Yeah, I feel like it's rare that somebody sees an indie game and they're like, I'm only going to get that one or that one. If they really love, love two indie games, they're just going to get both of them. And they're just going to play both of them and enjoy them in a different way. But it's not, there's no competition. It's really awesome.